The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Philippi, and it's recorded in the third chapter of Philippians, the 13th and 14th verse, where he says, one thing I do is forgetting those things that are behind, I press on. This is most certainly an encouragement to Paul himself, but I believe an encouragement to the church at Philippi as well, because often this is what is needed. You know, in our journey, sometimes we grow stagnant. Sometimes we don't seem to move in God as we once did. Well, Moments of Life is an instrument in the hands of God to edify you and strengthen you and encourage you. I look forward to sharing with you every single week as we dive into the Word of God together and move into new revelation, new understanding, new knowledge that's going to increase your application of the Word of God and bring greater fruitfulness into your journey. We're going to go together as we dive into the word moment by moment for these moments of life are just for you. Well, great day to you. It's a great day in the kingdom of God, and I'm declaring it's a great day in your life. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Let the king of glory come into your life and strengthen you and empower you, anoint you and cause you to take on a different path or a greater path than where you are right now. There's so much that the Lord wants to do in you and with you. And I just want to be an instrument in God's hands to help you to live out the things that the Lord is calling you to put your hands to and the person that the Lord is calling you to be. So let's pray together that we can dive into this word. Father, thank you for every voice under uh, every uh, uh, person under the sound of my voice. Thank you for all things that are kingdom. Thank you for grace that allows us to manifest your kingdom. Thank you for helping us to know who we are, to see who we are and what it is that you have for us. Pour your spirit out in this time together and let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to go back to two things. Number one, a statement that I made a couple of messages ago where I shared with you that I'm going to build something out over the next uh three or four series so that we can really hear and take hold of something I believe the Lord is wanting to communicate to us. Well, this is the second message into that, and the next message I speak will be that all together. And so we'll hear all three of those so we can carry out what it is that, the God, that God is wanting to communicate to us. And secondly, I just want you to go back to where you were the last time we were together, which is Matthew, the 16th chapter, and we're going to read the 13th through the 18th verse. Matthew 16, 13 through 18. It says, now when Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they answered, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you yourselves say that I am? And Simon Peter, Peter replied, you're the Christ, son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is what that means. Are you Simon Barjona? For flesh and blood, meaning men, have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. You are Petra. And on this rock, I'll build my church in the gates of Hades. The powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it for it to be strong against its detriment or hold out against it. We will not see the gates of hell prevail against what it is that the Lord is truly building. And we'll talk about that at another time. But right now, we want to focus in on what it is the Lord is saying to us today. I want you to understand that so many people lack true understanding of their identity and their being because many people lack fellowship with Jesus. If you want to know who you are, you find that and you discover that not on television, not through music, not through a hobby or through a career. You discover it through living life in Jesus. But many lack fellowship, so many live not knowing who they really are. In verses 13 through 18, it tells the story of Peter coming into the knowledge of who Jesus is. I want you to catch this. Jesus tells him, because of what Peter tells him, that flesh and blood men have not revealed this to you, Peter, but my Father who is in heaven, that's how you got this revelation. Here's what I want you to catch. The intimacy that Peter had with God was the catalyst for him knowing things that others did not know. Let me say that again. 
the intimacy he had with God was the catalyst for him knowing things that others didn't know. What did Peter have? He had a communication gateway with God that others didn't possess. Now, we don't know how Peter tapped into this, but it confirms my teachings regarding connection with Jesus. See, intimacy has such benefits that um, it is one of the greatest things to help people move forward. Intimacy has benefits, and I believe one of the greatest benefits to helping people move forward is the revelation that comes from intimacy. Intimacy should birth revelation. Intimacy does birth revelation. Intimacy with God by Peter birthed the revelation that Peter spoke to Jesus, and it caused Jesus to say, hold up, dude, Flesh and blood did not reveal that that you saying right there. Flesh and blood didn't give you that. Only my father in heaven, only your connection with God could have given you the revelation that you're speaking. Now, understand this. Jesus isn't wanting to waste your time. What he's wanting to do, though, is to convey to you things that come from God so that your life can be changed. And not only that. He wants to release power to you that you've never known. Yeah, power that comes from intimacy. Let us pray and let us get together the next time. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. So, Father, we pray for understanding now. We pray, Heavenly Father, for grace to take our hands out of everything that we touch that we believe gives us our identity jewelry, houses, cars, land, vacations, money, status, appointments, promotions. Father, we repent for believing that these things give us identity, for only identity can come from you. And Lord, we desire to walk out an intimate relationship with you that revelation comes into our lives from that intimacy revelation, things that you're speaking to us and things we can speak back to you, words you're saying and words we can say back to you. Father, we long for and we desire to connect with you at a level that is so deep that we have all the revelation through communication and fellowship, through dining and supping with you that we could ever, ever need and that which causes our lives to break forth in new power and in new glory. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand and we say, Lord, make our identity clear. Grace us to run into you and boldly approach the throne of grace with confidence that you too want to be near us. We long for you. We hunger for you. We desire you and we thirst for you. Let our hunger, let our thirst, let our desire be filled, Lord God, through understanding and knowing you better through constant communication with you, our God, our King, and our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The next time we're together, we're going to pack this out until the end, and we're going to see the good things that the Lord has for those who are willing to walk in constant communion and fellowship with him. Be encouraged. Take care. God bless you. Over and out. It's Apostle Terrell. Peace.